that ball. Remember per radio with your host, Gen T. Fuck, I don't know what, what the fuck. Yeah, fuck it. Jen is a warlord. I'm fucking coming for you. Now I feel poo coming out of my bum. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's a lot right now. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rambo per radio. I am your host, Jen T, Twitter and Instagram at Jen T523. I am also 4T and tired as fuck. <laughs> oh my gosh. So many things have happened since I've last spoken to you. Uh, there's just, I literally had maybe. I think at one point, I think I had like an hour, an hour that there was a window that I could have recorded, but I was just so exhausted from all of the celebrations, y'all. I mean, I had three, 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 three parties, (laughs) okay? (laughs) Nobody should have three parties, okay? One is enough, (laughs) Oh my god. And of course, you know, it it wasn't my, you know, doing, you know, I set up one of the parties, okay? The other two were people throwing them for me, okay? Uh what the hell? <laughs> Woo! That was that was too much. Too 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 much too soon. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. It's already been a week since my birthday and I'm completely exhausted. It is like Somebody asked, how does it feel to be 40? And I'm like, I'm exhausted. (laughs) Every response is, I'm exhausted. (laughs) I'm tired. (laughs) Oh, my God. But we must, we must, we must, we must catch up. We must recap. How have things been? Starting off with... uh, um, the absolute carnage that is happening at work behind the scenes. I mean, absolute <laughs> devastation that's happening at work right now. So, um, I mean, I knew this day was coming, but I just didn't think it would happen this fast. But we have not one, but potentially two, two, two people in my specific department, which we're already short staffed in that are fucking leaving. Um, Two of them predominantly do the closing, which your girl can't close because I pay $200 a month to go to two gyms, okay? So your dear host loves the gym, needs to go to the gym. I cannot emphasize this. The sole purpose of me getting out of bed 99.9% of the time is when do I get to go to the gym? It makes me happy. It's what keeps me alive. You understand. Surely you understand. So when my boss thinks it's a good idea to just start making me clothes, I'm like, I don't, madam, I don't think you understand how, just how important the gym is to me and what it does for me. 60% more effective than Prozac. This has been studied. Sauna use, 20 minutes a day, four days a week, reduces all cause of mortality by 45%. I, it, just the benefits of going to the gym are endless. Not to mention, when you go specifically for jujitsu, I love jujitsu, okay? When I wake up in the morning, I put a rash guard on first. I put a rash guard on. I'm like John Donna here. I'm always wearing a rash guard, literally. 99% of the time, either under my shirt or over my shirt, I've got a rash guard on because I'm trying to figure out in my schedule, will I get to jujitsu or not? (laughs) So now that two closers are leaving, that potentially leaves me and one other worker because the other lady that works in my department can't close at all because 
she cannot close. So, which I'm glad that that is respected. But somehow, when I say I cannot close, it is not respected. Fine. Uh, duly noted. But, uh, you know, I've only closed uh, for 15 years. 16 years, actually. Uh, Pre-COVID, I was closing all the time. So, but when I discovered jujitsu, it's like, hey, man, I have a need to not be here at night because I've got something going on. You know, my, my future, my future is jujitsu. In order for me to get my black belt, I have to go to class to get better, which means I cannot afford to miss class. Forget the financial part of it because it's just money. I need to go to class. So I can show my coach that I'm learning. When I show my coach I am learning, that means I get belts. When I get my black belt, I can open up my gym. You see? So there is an acceleration to make sure I don't miss class. It's very vital I don't miss class. Of course, my boss sees it differently, and she's, air quotes, going to fit the need that she sees fit to do, which, fine, that's what she gets paid for. But, uh, you know, before she came along, this wasn't a problem. This was not a problem. But because this individual is here, God bless her, no disrespect, this is the homie's wife, um, because of her inability to not know how to schedule people, it has just pissed people off, and so people are leaving. There is just a mass exodus happening. So, and now, uh, as I predicted, I just didn't guess the time right. Uh, my beloved, one of my favorite coworkers, Robert, is leaving. And he is just the sweetest uh, old man you'll ever meet. And, you know, it's been so fun working with him. He leaves in less than two weeks. Um, we've got another coworker in another department leaving in less than a week. And then back in my department again. Uh, we know in, within the next month whether or not my coworker will be staying or uh, going as well because he's working on school projects and he's going to become a fancy, smart doctor, you understand? And clearly when you become a doctor, you just don't have time to waste your time doodling at some job, right? You've got to be doing studies and cases and lab work and theories. So shout out to the homie Oscar. He has earned it. He's f- smart as fuck. Uh, and he's going to be doing some serious studying, Jack, okay? He is just about done with school, and now he's on to the part where he's going to be getting uh, either his master's or, or some sort of program initiative and doing all kinds of labs and theories and testing out ship and testing out shit and opening a clinic. I mean, my guy is going to be doing big things, so I- I'm super proud of him. So that just leaves me with uh, my... It'll be me, the lady who can't close, and the man who kept his cat, his dead cat, in the closet for days. <laughs> it will be the three of us. And, well, he has no excuse to not close. Uh, and it will probably mean I will be closing with him, which this cannot happen. This is just not good at all. I just don't think it's a good idea. It's not healthy um, because, A, once again, the gym is what gives me life. And, B... Who wants to be around a negative person all day? This guy has nothing going on. I mean, God bless him. Sweet man. But his life socially is coming to work. Okay? He don't have no friends. Which There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not healthy. Uh, when he's excited to leave work, it's just so he can go watch TV. I'm like, yeah. Oh, no. No. No, I can't be around that. I can't be around that. I need to be around people who are positive, who are striving to do better, to to improve themselves. That's that's what gets me going. So I just it's not conducive to my health to be closing with a negative person uh, five days a week. So, um, you know, because this is what's going to happen, because there's literally no one else. Uh, The other lady that works there has is. A Jehovah's Witness who was on some kind of pilgrimage for the next month. And then when she does come back, she only works like three days a week for like four hours a day. That does not help anyone. Um, And then we've got uh, my man, uh, Andrew. Shout out to the homie, Andrew. He was working um, 
full time, but because of school, uh, he had to scale back his hours. So I'm praying that he will be back for the summer. I doubt it, but if he does, that will buy me some time during the summer to find a new job. <laughs> Because your dear host is not going to be closing. Uh, she's already got me closing one day a week. And that one day a week is a day that I'm coaching someone. So it's like, again, there's another avenue for me to get out of there. And it's being blocked again by this job. So I'm like, okay, I've had enough. I, I cannot do this anymore. I have got to find a job that will respect the fact that I can't work nights. I don't care what kind of job it is. Trash, toilets, anything. I just cannot be there at nighttime. Okay. I'm, I'm either going to the class I'm, or I'm coaching someone. And both of those things are vital to my existence. Nothing gets me going more than podcasting, coaching people, or learning something. And Unfortunately, all that happens after 6 p.m. <laughs> I, I just I hate to be that person, but this is this is the truth. So I'm just like, man, OK, mad dash time, mad dash time to look for a job, start making a resume. Uh, I could have stayed at my job for another 10 more years easily, even though as terrible as it was. I could have stayed there for no more, another 10 more years, but because this individual is making it difficult for everybody else, it is now making my life difficult, and I cannot do this. I'm, I'm officially 40 years old, and when you, for some reason when you turn 40, you ain't got time for the bullshit. <laughs> you want things to run as smoothly and as efficiently as possible because you already know that you're running out of time, Jack. <laughs> Over the hill, gang. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, it is about to get nasty. Okay, it is going to get so bad now because essentially we literally do not have enough bodies to run the store and nobody's doing anything about it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> so I'm just sitting there with my cup of Baja Blast watching it all burn down. And speaking of burning down, it's time for customers of the week. Well, <laughs> you know, it's always a treat when uh, uh, Tony Pepperoni calls because, you know, he just just goes on on about the same damn things. I'm a roofer. I'm a bodybuilder. Uh, man, uh, these goddamn black people in the White House don't want me to have my vitamins. You know, uh, I can say that. I'm married to an Asian lady. I'm not racist. <laughs> Hello? Does somebody speak English there? I cannot believe it. I was talking to somebody who spoke... Zero English. I thought it was calling Guadalajara. Ha, 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 ha. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, player. Your last name is Hispanic. And now you're talking shit. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, my guy, whatever. So it's just the fact that this guy calls every fucking time about absolutely nothing. I'm a roofer. I'm a bodybuilder. You know, I'm buff. I used to bench. Da, 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 da. I want to do this. Uh, tomatoes do this. Uh, uh, I heard if you sprinkle lemon on your food, it does this. It's like, bruh, do whatever you want, okay? The fact that you're calling a health food store about every single fucking thing you do Tells me you are not a roofer. You are not a bodybuilder. You are not married to an Asian woman. You are alone living in the high desert. And unfortunately, in the high desert, there is the tiniest health food store. And I'm pretty sure they told you to fuck right off. <laughs> Do not call here again. <laughs> but for some reason, this guy calls my work and just ugh, so bad. So I got a little snippet because I couldn't get my phone out in time, but I got a little snippet of Tony Pepperoni. Let me let me play that for you. Tony Pepperoni here. <laughs> God damn. What a jackass. It's always the same fucking conversation, and I'm like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I'm like, my guy, my guy, my guy. Shut the fuck up. Please! <laughs> I'm older, it's like, damn, I really got, 
the first week I swore up like a balloon. I thought that I, um, I thought that there was something wrong with me, but then it went away. Was the water getting collected in my system or something? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that with the blood test? Should I stay away from it until after the two months and then start taking it again? Yeah, I would do that. I can, I, I can notice the difference right now because I stopped taking it and, and I, I've been a bodybuilder my whole life and that stuff really helps. It's like, um, Jesus, with my uh, inflammation, with my, maybe because more water or something, I don't know, but it, that stuff is like a miracle to me. But if you or me stay away from it until after the blood work, do you think? And yeah. the month and a half from now? Yes, I would wait. Okay, okay, because they say um, even even though it doesn't cause, uh, uh, it, it peaks out or levels out after after eight to ten weeks, and that's why people just take more, and then it's, you know what I mean, because we make it naturally, and then it's, uh, they want you to stop cycle it, in other words. That way your body doesn't get used to it, so it'll work the next time again. So I'll just take a longer break this time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, no I haven't problem. talked to you in a long time, huh? It's been uh, probably a year. Uh -huh. Okay, take it easy. Thank okay. you, miss. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God damn it, man. Why are you calling? Why are you calling? Listen. You don't have a question. You're just calling and making a statement. I'm a roofer. I'm a body builder. I'm a I want to take the creatine. Should I stop taking creatine? I thought you were taking creatine. Bubba. Bubba. Hey, Tony. Hey, fucking Tony Pepperoni. Okay? Which, by the way, thank God that was one of the shorter interactions we have. Usually, it's a half an hour of just babbling on mindlessly about absolutely nothing. This time it was about creatine and he's a bodybuilder. Well, uh, well, if you're a bodybuilder, then you already know. You already know about creatine. Why are you calling? Why are you calling, bitch? Yeah, I'm a roofer. I'm a bodybuilder. I'm taking the creatine. I'm about to have blood work. I have a one to run. You take a long, take a long. This is what you do. You, 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 why are you telling me, man? Why are you telling me? If you already know, then you know, right? If you know, you know. <laughs> If you know, you know. Yeah. Buddy, if you know, you know, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's just the dumbest interactions. And yes, it is super illegal to record someone when on the phone. But it's Tony fucking Pepperoni. I don't give a fuck. Okay? It's been 21 fucking years of this guy calling. Okay? Same conversation. I'm a roofer. I'm a bodybuilder. Can I take this? Can I take that? You know, I saw doctor. My doctor's Chinese. Yeah, something wrong. We do know. He told me I stopped taking it. Like, just the most garbage conversation. And I've just had a fuck enough. So I'm going to re keep recording this guy till I leave. Because <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> oh, my God. Speaking of fuck it. Um... <sighs> I don't even know how to describe this customer because it is literally someone that needs to be seen to believed that is real, but I will just do my best. So, um, <laughs> if you could imagine a character that uh, looks like Rick James, but is covered in pins from head to toe, not on his face or on his body, but just he has a hat covered. Like, you know, when you go to Disneyland and you see like these pin people and they got all the pins everywhere, all over their jacket, on their hat, or they're just covered in pins. This motherfucker looks like Rick James and is covered in pins and just... All kinds of like weird antennas hanging off his hat with pins hanging on the hat. And I'm just like, bruh, would you, would you like the directions to the insane asylum, please? Because you look crazy. You look crazy, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Imagine Rick James and Terrence Howard had a baby. It would be this guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the fact that this guy is already weird, just weird looking, then the attitude is very aggressive. Excuse me, excuse me, mate, excuse me. Hey, old boss, hey, old boss. And I just, I'm like, oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> um, so uh, my coworker, she was just walking uh, back to her area. And uh, she's a cashier, but sometimes she fills in in grocery. Okay. But she does n- not know a damn thing about vitamins. So he comes hobbling in there. Which I'm pretty sure the cane is decoration because I saw him just walking up holding the cane. But then when he walked in the store, he had to use the cane. So I was like, okay, here comes the haters ball. <laughs> so he comes along with, hey, man, scoop me, man. And then, um, of course, my coworker doesn't think he's talking to her because he said, man. So she hears man. So she keeps walking. He's like, boss, 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 I'm talking to you. Are you just going to walk away from me because you white or whatever and I'm black? And I was standing there. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, oh, here we go. So and she was like, um, um, and she's the sweetest lady. She's like, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I didn't know who you were talking to. He goes, I'm talking to you or whatever. Tell me about vitamins for the prostate. And she goes, oh, okay, uh, let me get somebody for you. What do you mean, let me get something for you? Is this some kind of racism or something? And I was like, standing there in the corner, I was like, she doesn't know about vitamins. Why are you being a dick? She's like, uh, sir, I, I don't work in the vitamin department. I, I, I'm just filling in in grocery. And he goes, ugh. What's the point of you wearing the shirt if you don't know anything about prostate? She's like, uh, sir, I'm just a cashier filling in, in grocery. They need help, so I'm just walking over here to help out. <laughs> I'm doing my job. I'm a cashier. He goes, hmm, isn't everybody that work in here supposed to know about vitamins? And then my uh, boss happened to walk by, and she's like, oh, uh, hey, can you help me? And uh, he was like, yeah, sure, what's going on? And she goes, uh, he's got a question about um, supplements, and I don't know. I'm just a cashier. And he goes, ah, oh, she she trying to be racist, passing you on to me or whatever. And he goes, wait, hold on. What are you talking about? And he's like, she doesn't know about vitamins. She's just a cashier, sir. I have different people that work in departments. And he's like, for example, here's Jen. And he points to me, and I was like, you motherfucker. I'm hiding. I'm hiding in plain sight, bitch. I don't want to help this ghetto pin weirdo. I'm trying to hide, man. I'm trying to just get to Jujitsu. Leave me the hell alone. He's like, I have Jen here. She works in vitamins. He's like, I'm a manager. And that other girl is just a cashier. People work in different departments. They don't know everything about the store. He goes, well, then fine. I'll ask you or whatever. I'll ask you. What do you? What can you tell me? Supplements for the prostate. My prostate is backed up. And I was like, that ain't the only thing backed up, Jack. <laughs> you full of shit, sir. <laughs> I'm calling it now. <laughs> and he's like, well, okay. So I'm going to refer you to my vitamin specialist here because I don't know anything about supplements either. I'm just a manager. And he's like... Well, how the hell did you become a manager if you don't know about vitamins? Or are you just racist? And he was like, hey, hey, hey. And I was like, oh, oh shit. I'm like, wait a minute. You don't want to play games because my boss, he's super cool, but he's also Sicilian. And so if you know anything about Sicilian people, their temper goes from zero to 1,000 in a second. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not racist. And I hate And he's like, and I am very upset that you are implying that I am racist, sir. He's like, I'm just a manager. This is Jen. She works in vitamins. She can assist you. She's been doing this for 20 plus years. And I said, yeah, I, I, I can help. It's cool. And he goes, I want to ask a man about my prostate. And he's like, I'm sorry, sir. Jen is the only one I have here that works in vitamins. If you don't like that, you can leave. And he goes, oh, 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 
Are you threatening me? Are you threatening me or whatever? Is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm black? And I was like, sir, I was like, did you need some help? I can help you. But you don't got a prostate. You don't got a prostate. And I was like, okay, sir, I don't have a prostate. You are correct. I said, but I can tell you how these things work for prostate health. So I take him over there and my boss is like, his eyes are like three times the size. He's he's pissed. And I was like, oh my God. So I was like, sir, these are our prostate products. Okay. This is what this does. This is what this does. And he goes, you know what? I can read it myself. Thanks. And I was like, okay, fine. If you have any other questions, let us know. And I walk away. And then he storms out. He's like, psh, psh. man, I thought y'all knew about vitamins. Not coming back here again. Y'all are racist. And I was like, okay, so in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, so you're the type of person who is claiming racism, but there is no racism happening. Three people want to help you. Two of them don't work in vitamins. And then I'm black trying to help you. You are black. How is that racist? How is that racist? Explain that to me, sir. You're just a jackass. How about that? You're an asshole. You're a a fucking prick. Nobody wants to help a prick. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Asian, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, Dominican. I, I don't care. It don't matter what your skin color is. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole. That's it. So... After he said, I'm not coming back. This place is racist. He come back in a week later in a fucking boogie cart. I was like, oh, my God. He went from a cane to a boogie cart. Here we fucking go. So (laughs) and I was like, you know, trying to be nice. It's like, hello, sir. How are you? And he's like, hey, y'all got some some men here to help me with my bras date. And I was like, yep over there and I was like I'm done with you I'm done with this guy and then uh, (laughs) after he talks to one of my co-workers he's over in the essential oils and I'm just standing there just uh, you know waiting for the phone to ring that's what I do I wait for the phone to ring all day uh, for orders and then I go to the gym and so I'm just standing there and I'm like I don't want to help this guy but you know I'm trying to do the right thing Trying to do the right thing. Do the right thing when no one's watching. Do the right thing when no one's watching. He's like, yeah, so uh, y'all got any essential oils? And I was like, yes, your, your wheelchair is parked right in front of the essential oil section, sir. And he's like, mm, I know that, but do you got any essential oils for vaginas? And I was like, yeah. This is what it sounds like when those cry. (laughs) 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 Yeah. I'm looking for essential oils for vaginas because uh, 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 I'm looking specifically for a a yawny steamer. Do y'all sell yawny steamers here? (laughs) Bitch! Do y'all sell yawny steamers here? And then if you do, I need the essential oils to put in there. And I was like, uh, sir, I don't, um, um. (laughs) 
I don't, but first and foremost, I don't believe that you are anywhere near anybody's vagina or Yanni to begin with. You're covered in pins, sir. <laughs> I was like, damn, whoever this bitch is, call the police. (laughs) I was like, yo, hey, Lord, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Lord. Wait a minute. (laughs) Lord Jesus, you won't let the lesbian get near a vagina, but you're going to let a man covered in pins who looks like if Terrence Howard and Rick James had a baby? (laughs) What the hell is this? <laughs> oh man, I was like, oh, I was just in a state of shock. I'm like, ladies, you won't let me near your your yanni, okay? You won't let me near your veg, but you'll let this guy. <laughs> you'll let this guy in. <laughs> I was like, oh hell no. I was like, sir, we don't carry Yanni steamers and essential oils don't belong near vaginas. Okay. These are just facts. (laughs) I'm like, wait, is this the lady you're keeping in the basement? Are you trying to like pour essential oils on her vagina and just melt it off? Like what the fuck is going on at this guy's house? I'm just imagining this guy's like got some poor lady in his basement and he's like opens the door and then it's just like Hey baby Let me put some oils on your yanni I got some new Disney pins for your pushy. <laughs> oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> Unbelievable. I was like, wow. Uh, what's the location so I can send the authorities? <laughs> Oh, dear God. And then so, you know, because for whatever reason, I guess he thinks we're bros now because we talked about Yanni's together, which that was a a monologue. I did not want to be a part of that conversation. (laughs) I was uh, (laughs) being held against my will, you understand? The next day, this motherfucker is laying. I pull up to work. And he is so, I don't know, medically not okay. Last week he went from a cane to a to this week a boogie cart to the next day. He can't even move out of the car. He's yelling at the window at me. So I'm walking into work and then I hear, sis, sis, ayo sis, ayo sis. How you doing? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, sis, you want to tell me if they got this in there for vaginal health? I can't get out the car. <laughs> and I was like, um, I'm trying to clock into work. I'm running late. Thanks. Um. I'll send someone out to assist you. (laughs) 
I never did. I was like, oh, my God. Hey, yo, sis. Hey, yo, sis. What's going on? How you doing? I need some for vaginal health. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. Oh. Oh. I don't know how any, how is this possible? How any woman could be attracted to this man? I cannot do the mathematical equation. He's covered in pins, y'all. Head to toe. Pins. And then when he's not talking about Yanni's or his prostate, he's screaming about how everyone is racist to him because he's a black man. I'm like, no, people don't want to help you because you're a weirdo covered in pins with a fucking giant bubba cup walking in the store yelling out, you're racist. Who's going to help me? You're racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I leave, I'm going to miss this place so dearly. <laughs> Just for the customer interactions alone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> where else are you going to be where you see a man covered in pins yelling out, asking for essential oils for vaginas and Yanni Steemans? I mean, come on. <laughs> some current events, some current events. Uh, former bass player from the band Train passed away at 58 years old. And uh, he apparently... Slipped and fell in the shower and died. You, how, how the hell? I mean, that's got to be the worst, just death ever. Like, oh, oh man, this guy. Falling on it. <laughs> I'm going to hell for this. My man slipped in the bed of and died. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. The homie, shout out to the homie Spat. He said, <laughs> he said he slipped on drops of Jupiter. <laughs> I said, bitch, no, you did it. No, you did it, man. <laughs> He said he slipped on drops of Jupiter. <laughs> that is, I was like, you wait, wait a minute, mate. <laughs> you going to hell for that one for sure. <laughs> Oh, man, apparently he's the former basis of, of Train, and uh, he had some substance abuse problems, and so he was booted out of the band. Uh, but apparently his new gig was house-sitting for a friend, and poor guy, uh, during his house-sitting excursion, slipped and fell in the bathtub and died and wasn't found till his friends came back from vacation a week later. Ugh. Unbelievable. Rest in peace, my guy. That is terrible. I'm, and I can't imagine. I mean, I cannot tell you how many times I've slipped in the bathroom and broken a toe, broken fingers, nearly cracked my head on the bathtub. I mean, just, it is so dangerous in the bathroom. I mean, I would equate going to the bathroom almost like driving a car, texting while driving. I mean, come on, y'all. It is so fucking dangerous. You don't know if you're going to go take a shit and that's the last shit you take. <laughs> Didn't Elvis die in the bathroom? I mean, come on. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Who else passed away while we was gone? Uh, 
Oh, man. Oh, oh. Uh, I think Sam Rubin, that might have been the week prior to it, but uh, yeah, Sam Rubin passed away. Sam Rubin was like the Channel 5 guy, also fought at Ellis Mania. He fought uh, Tara Fitzpatrick in probably the worst Ellis Mania fight of all time. But shout out to Sam Rubin because that inspired me. I said, I don't want to see another motherfucking fight like that again. I have got to enlist. I will sign up. And try to make the best Ellis Mania fight possible. So, and I feel like uh, it might not have been the best Ellis Mania fight possible, but it was definitely better than Sam and Dara. <laughs> uh, but shout out to Sam Rubin for all of the years of entertainment and news and reporting. And uh, uh, he will be missed. Uh, and let's see what else is going on. Uh, I've got... Um, a woman in San Antonio, Texas, 32-year-old San Antonio woman, uh, was at McDonald's and left the drive-thru, and they forgot her biscuits and hash browns, and she returned very, very irate, so irate that she shot at the McDonald's drive-thru eight times. She shot at the drive-thru window eight times in the attempt <laughs> to get her... <laughs> To get her her nuggets and her her nuggets in the attempt to get her hash brown and biscuits back. She shot at the McDonald's eight times. I mean, hey. (laughs) All you have to do is say, hey, excuse me, you forgot. I'm sorry. Were you planning on putting my biscuits and hash back in? No, this bitch was like, hold on. (laughs) <laughs> the team goes crap, clap, 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 skeleton pop, pop, and a coop, 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 boom. <laughs> this bitch opened fire at McDonald's for forgetting her food. <laughs> what a world we live in, folks. Um, let's see what else is going on. Speaking on a world we live in, Sean Kingston and his mother were arrested for fraud charges after uh, claiming some jewelry and never returning it. I guess they borrowed some ju- some jewelry from a bunch of different jewelers with the, atten- with the intent on never returning the jewelry they borrowed. And so now these jewelers are, are, are staking their claim. And, you know, normally, you know, when you steal jewelry, it's like, hey, you know, a couple hundred bucks, no big deal. But this was like, over a half a million dollars in jewelry, easily, from just one jeweler that I saw. And so, <laughs> um, sure they call 911. <laughs> Somebody call 911. <laughs> My man's got his mom arrested, uh, but the story gets better. Apparently, when Sean Kingston was performing in San Bernardino, California, (laughs) and apparently he was performing his hit song, Eeny Meeny. (laughs) Eeny Meeny, while performing Eeny Meeny in San Bernardino, Eeny Meeny featuring Justin Bieber. (laughs) Sean Kingston was arrested on fraud charges. <laughs> My man is locked up in the San Bernardino jail right now. <laughs> Shorty is an eeny meeny locked up in jail for fraud, which is crazy because it's not only him, but they got his mom. Okay, so they arrested his mom in Florida at his house, and then they arrested Mr. Eeny Meeny at the San Bernardino concert here (laughs) and threw his ass in jail. (laughs) Oh, my God. Can you imagine? First of all, you're Sean Kingston, like, you're a beautiful girl. Nam yum na, you made me do my normal. 
This is so bad. You're that guy. You're just, I don't know how, but my man has 15 million monthly listeners. How the fuck? How the fuck you become famous on this trash is just beyond me. Okay, fine. You made it. Whatever. But on top of that, you're already famous. You made it. You're still committing crimes? Hey, <laughs> you can't commit crimes if you're famous. Did somebody tell this guy, like, hey, if you borrow jewelry, you got to return it. If you don't want to return it, then pay for it. It's not that hard. But if you're doing concerts in San Bernardino, that tells me you've fallen on some hard times. <laughs> My man's just falling on hard times. <laughs> All right, coming to you live at the San Bernardino Orange Show. Here's Sean Kingston. Your way to be. <laughs> there he is, arrest him <laughs> Holy shit, man <laughs> uh, Let's see what else <laughs> And our final news story Just in time for our UFC picks Thank God we have UFC We have missed you so greatly Um UFC news, UFC star Bryce Mitchell, who believes in flat earth and that there is no gravity, uh, has told news outlets that he is going to homeschool his children because he does not want them to turn out to be homosexuals. <laughs> oh my god. Where is it? Where the hell is it? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is UFC athlete Bryce Mitchell. Cause I'm I'm from Louisiana. I talk like this. Gravity isn't real. The Earth is flat. Praise God. And I'm gonna homeschool my kids so they don't turn out to be homosexuals. <laughs> Shit. What the hell kind of ass backward thinking is that, Jack? People don't turn gay. They is born gay, okay? Listen, I'm gonna play the song. This is how I knew I was gay, okay? We're talking, this is like. Uh. Oh man, when did this song come out? This this was like 1988, okay? I don't even know what sexuality is. I'm like four or five at the time. But I saw this music video from Aerosmith, Ragdoll, and I was like, there's little naked ladies dancing in the window. I was like, oh, oh, I is a gay ass lady. <laughs> sex is but I just know when I see a fine ass lady dancing in a window I was like oh uh, yeah is she seeing anybody 
<laughs> Come on. If you is like ladies, go to YouTube and watch Ragdoll and tell me there is you're not attracted to the lady dancing in the window. I mean, come on. Even if it is 1988, that lady was fine. Okay? But there was never a time where, I mean, look, there's dudes in this video. Half-naked dudes playing guitars and drums. Steven Tyler had the lips. I, I was like, no, no, no. I need the lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dog, there was never a conversation I had with my parents. I mean, other than I told my parents, I'm like, you know, because I had those feelings. I was like, well, this doesn't seem right because I'm a lady and I like ladies. So I'm like, maybe I'm supposed to be a boy. So that's when I told my mom, I'm like, I think I'm supposed to be a boy because ladies are cute. And she's like, impossible, I pray for a girl. So I'm like, okay, well then. Oh, he's a lesbian. <laughs> but I didn't know what it was until, you know, I would say like 10 years later. And then I was like, oh, shit. I was gay as fuck. <laughs> but I'm telling you, there was never a time where I was like, look, listen, I tried. I tried to uh, like guys. Uh, I even tried to go on a date with uh, uh, a guitarist from one of my bands. I tried, y'all. I tried to hold this man's hand and I was like, yeah. And he's like, yuck, Jen, this is gay as fuck. And I was like, bro, you're right. This is hella gay. I was like, you want to play basketball? And he's like, hell yeah. And I was like, cool, date over. Back to basketball. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I fucking tried, okay? I tried. When I went to the banquet, because we didn't have prom, okay? I went to private school. It was a banquet. We weren't allowed to dance. We would go see a terrible comedian and get all dressed up for nothing and sit there for hours. And I tried, y'all. I took dudes with me. I posed for pictures in a dress. I mean, just bleh, vile stuff, man. I tried. Every time I'm like, yo, I wish I had a lady date. <laughs> what the fuck is this dude on my arm for? <laughs> and I'm sure this guy was like, yo, uh. What the fuck is this? I'd rather have a lady that's into me. Or even better, uh, one of the dudes I took with me to one banquet is hella gay. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Bryce Mitchell is worried about his children becoming gay. I'm like, if anything else, you being so anti-gay might actually make your kids gay. Do you see what I'm saying? Because... Real people don't care if their kid is gay or straight. They just want their child to be happy, okay? They want their child to be safe, and they want their child to be loved. And they want somebody to love their child as much as they love their child, which, of course, is never going to beat the love of a parent. But you want some, you want the comfort to know that when you're gone, somebody's going to love your kid as much as you did them, right? So the fact is this guy like, I'm keeping my kids sheltered away. From the gay stuff, and I'm hammering in the Bible, and get, and gravity's not real. I'm like, okay, well, let's test out your gravity's not real theory. Um, so you're seated in a couch conducting an interview, holding your child. Gravity's not real. Why don't you let go of your child and see if your child will still stay seated in midair? <laughs> Hello, Sir Isaac Newton. <laughs> How about you stand up from your chair and sit down, <laughs> remove the chair and sit down? <laughs> That's gravity, bitch. I don't know what else to tell you. If you throw something up in the air, it's going to come back down to earth. That's gravity. This has been proven. These are facts. I don't know how else to explain it. And as far as your child going to school with kids or without kids, like I said, if anything else, Nine times out of ten, sheltered kids are going to be trouble. Kids are already trouble as is. But sheltered kids, holy shit, they're going to cause the worst kind of shenanigans. I'm predicting my man's son is going to be at some gay club within the next 20 years. <laughs> this kid is going to be at Studs in West Hollywood shaking his dang -a -lang. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> Brass Mitchell's my dad, and he tried to protect me from the gate. But I'm at Studs, West Hollywood. Come and see me tonight. I'm shaking my dangling. <laughs> <laughs> See you tonight at Rocco's where I'm in a speedo shaking my dangling. <laughs> I mean, look, look what happens. Look at the Mormon kids. Okay. They get the old, they get the, the, the little rum springer where they get to like, when they're like 16, 17, they get to like bust out and see the real world and decide like if they want to be, keep being uh, or not Mormons, Amish. Look at Amish people. They get the little rum springer time where they get to decide when they're like 16 or 17, if uh, they get their little time in, in the real world for a little bit. And then they get to decide like, do I want to join the real world or do I want to stay with my people? So, and uh, how's that going? <laughs> Once they get a taste for the real world, Jack, it's all over. <laughs> you can only shelter a child for so long. Okay. Uh, take, for instance, my parents. Obviously, my parents, they tried. <laughs> they really fucking tried. My dad's super conservative, Seventh-day Adventist. At one point, we didn't have TV in the house because... I was watching way too much MTV, getting into trouble, super young age. So my parents just got rid of the TV. Nothing. Just gone. Okay. Them years without TV meant I went to my friend's house and watched TV there. Uh, When uh, I would go to my grandma's house, my cousin would tape MTV for me and I would watch MTV there on tape. (laughs) So... It was like, uh huh. <laughs> you might try to shelter your child, but they're going to find a way, Jack. They are going to find a way. The world is going to get to them. And I think, if anything else, I think it's important to prepare them for such. Be like, hey, look, this is what a hippie is. This is what a gay person is. This is what a straight person is. This is what a pots, pans, is. This is what a. This is what a. This is an alien. <laughs> I think if you prepare them for such, say, listen, obviously, Zizer them there is is a little bit of sus. It's a little bit of suspect. But the point is, love who you want to love. You're not hurting nobody. Uh, as long as you're not imposing your ideologies on other people, you're not trying to hurt no one, you 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 keep to yourself, you live your life, uh, you're not trying to murder nobody, you're not trying to rape no kids, it's all love. If you want to be a comedian, you want to be a janitor, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a train conductor, who fucking cares? Live your life. Experience life. Sheltering your child, I think, is going to be a mistake for Brother Bryce Mitchell. But uh, we've seen what sheltering has done. Look at Brother Bryce. <laughs> the earth is flat. Gravity ain't real. Uh, uh, uh. Y'all need Jesus. And I don't want to have a homosexual child. It's like, bro, what does that have to do So what if he's gay? So what if he's straight? Who cares? It's none of your fucking business, to be honest with you. Sure, he's your kid, but at the end of the day, it's his life. You know, when he turns 18, it's his life. There's not a damn thing you could do about it. Now, if he's living under your roof, maybe. But he might be bringing little gay boys back to the house with him. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. We don't know. What I do know is sheltering people, you're about to raise some little serial killer right there. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Absolutely. It's just crazy stuff. All right. So I'm going to give you these UFC picks and get the fuck up out of here. Uh, UFC 302, uh, main event, uh, Islam Mahakachev, Alhamdulillah, Inshallah. Versus Dustin Boyer, UFC 302. I've got Mitch Repsado, Repsoso, Repsoso, Mitch Reposo. I've got 
Aline Perez, which she's the Argentinian girl who who twerks after she wins. We want this bitch to win. <laughs> okay, I want to see some twerk action. Okay, call me selfish, but I'm gay. <laughs> Uh, Mickey Gall, that fight is trash. I don't care who you pick, whether you pick Mickey Gall or you you bet against this pick. That fight is trash. Go to the snack bar. That will be a terrible fight. Both of those fighters are terrible. I don't know how both of them are employed by the UFC, but they are. So if I had to take the trashiest of trash fighters, I'm going to take Mickey Gall. Uh, again, another fight. Philip Rowe versus Jake Matthews. Another garbage fight. Uh, I just went with Jake Matthews because he's Australian, and I'm going to go for the countdown and uh uh, Grant Dawson, uh, Alexander Romanov versus Chantin Almeida. I've got Romanov, Alexander the Great. I mean, hello, Romanovs, last dynasty on planet Earth. Those motherfuckers won't die. Never say die. Uh, Roman Kopilov, rude boy, run never on. Uh, that's also another close fight. I forget who he's fighting against. Um, it's a little tough opponent. I forget. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I don't remember the name, but it's not an easy fight. Uh, I should be probably be betting against Randy Brown, but I can't bet against the Jamaican brethren. You understand? Um, next, Nico Price. Uh, another bet. Uh, I won't be mad at you if you bet against that, because um, Nico Price is he's out there. I think he needs. I think he's lost his last two, so he needs a win here. Uh, same with Kevin Holland. Lost his last two. He needs a fucking win, and he's got a tough opponent. Uh, then we've got Sean Strickland versus. Uh, uh oh, oh, what's this guy? Fucking Paulo Costa, this fucking wine guy. <laughs> I'm taking Sean Strickland just by tough grit, and he's from Riverside, motherfucker. Last but not least, Islam Makhachev, Alhamdulillah, Inshallah, uh, versus Dustin the Diamond Boy. Um, I uh on paper. If I had to bet on this fight, obviously the odds are in favor of Islam Makhachev. Uh, but just to shake things up, I'm going to take Poirier uh, because this is potentially his last fight. Uh, I think he's got either this one or maybe one more fight and he's done. So I'm just going to say just because it's for a belt, fuck it. I'm going to take Dustin. But on paper, Islam should win. Uh, those are my motherfucking UFC picks. Bet with me. Bet against me. Who cares? Let's watch them fucking fights. Yeah. Now, all of the stuff I've been waiting to play for you while I've been gone. So many sound clips. I've just, I've been holding on to these bad boys for a minute. So, I am going to find them for you and play them. It's just, a, a, an episode of Ramble for Radio won't be complete unless you hear this. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I put my dick in your mouth, bitch. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus, God. Shitty people do shitty things to you because they feel shitty about themselves, not because you deserve to have shitty things done to you. That's a fact. Boom. Do some different music. We have all the shit that you're doing. We already have it. Little Uzi Bird is already doing it. Little Baby is already doing it. Dumb Baby is already doing it. It's literally two niggas with Bailey in their name. Do something else. Do something else. That's it. That's all we want. Do something else. Holy shit. <laughs> right now, I don't give a shit. So come fight right now. I don't give a shit. I love Canelo. So fight right now. I don't know. Right now, I can ask whatever I want, and I can do whatever I want. And I'm Mexica. I'm Mexican. I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. And I'm Mexican. I can fight right now. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I fucking love Canelo. He's the greatest. Oh, yes. This is, uh, I hope I can teach y'all some, some Vietnamese today. Here we go. Shit out you, bitch. Say, I'll beat the shit out of you, bitch. In Vietnamese. Ta dap mai chot con nê. Say it again with me. Ta dap mai chết con đi. Now, it doesn't really say the same because in Vietnamese is I will beat you to death, you whore. But in English, it translates to I'll beat the shit out of you, bitch. So say it again with me. 
ta đạp mày chết con đĩ ta đạp mày chết con đĩ ta đạp mày chết con đĩ that's the cadence that you want to keep ta đạp mày chết con đĩ ta đạp mày chết con đĩ in american i'll beat the shit out you bitch <cười> ta đạp mày chết con đĩ <cười> Oh shit, what is this? Oh god. I can't get enough of BBL Drizzy. This is this is my shit. Are we locked in? Are you my friend? Oh man, uh, whew. Oh, this one, what was this one about? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> this is Axl Rose falling down like he trips and falls on the ground. <laughs> and this is the sound he makes when he falls. And down to my last two favorite clips. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Orlando. I can't remember his last name, but this guy was on uh, That's So Raven. And ever since he left the show, he's kind of just been on this mental, just mental spiral. And the things that he say are just so crazy. I've even played one of his clips on here where he's like, mm, tell many mouths to suck my sack uh, when she was black. Like, what? So now he's got something else to say here. Here's brother Orlando here. Then you gave me the Uska Scoof Mash. You gave me the Uska Smooth. The Smooth Smash. Day. Yeah, son. I mean, I mean, you gave me the Uska Smooth. I love it, yo. I love it. You gave me the Uska Smooth. You know what I'm talking about, Diddy? So apparently my man's claiming that uh, Puff Daddy gave him the whoosh mash, whoosh mash. <laughs> Yo, then you gave me the whoosh gosh, whoosh mash. Yeah. Whoosh gosh, whoosh mash. The smooth mash. Daddy. Yeah, son. I mean, yeah, son. You remember? I mean, you gave me the whoosh gosh, whoosh mash. I love it, yo. Oh, fuck. I love it. You gave me the <laughs> Oh my god and just mm. Orlando is just like so cracked out now it's just crazy but I low key believe him I'm not surprised that he was giving a lot of people the ooshwash ooshwash um and then my my number one clip of the week here uh, apparently some fellers were uh congress was in session and apparently uh Marjorie Taylor Green uh told one of the other constituents in Congress that uh, maybe if she didn't have her fake eyelashes on, she could read. And then an all out war happened. And, you know, I got to explain this to y'all. You have to know something about black people um, because it's it's generational. Um, we 
possess the 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 comebacks of the century. I mean, you know, because we practice, you know, we practice. Uh, some of us, it comes a little bit more naturally to others, but for the most part, we're, we're well schooled. And so when um, when somebody tries to come for black people, um, nine times out of 10, we will come back with something that is just so vicious, just just so just nasty just the complete we just we don't even go from zero to 1000 we don't take the gloves off we just drop the nukes okay so i i you know obviously as a african-american i have to practice i have to be careful with what i say because there have been times where people have uh, come for me and i have just destroyed them and i've lost friends over this i've lost friends over comebacks so uh you got to be careful when you zap somebody because sometimes you can zap them to death and this is no exception so marjorie taylor green and i can't think of this this uh chick's name but uh they just go at it so here we go <laughs> so, um, Miss Crockett, I believe that's her name. Um, she, uh, after she was told about her fake eyelashes, um, AOC, who's just like such a drama queen, um, she's like, no, no, I'm gonna strike that from the record. And then the black girl goes, baby girl. <laughs> She's like, coming from a bleach bomb, bad Bill Butch body. <laughs> now, I don't like Democrat. I don't like Republican. I'm just a regular blue collar Joe, okay? So I'm here for any sort of drama against either side i'm here for it so <laughs> uh, every time i hear this like you know and, especially because i've been having to close at work a lot and there is literally nothing to do after six o'clock at my at my job i just walk around singing that song i'm like bleach bomb bad built butch body <laughs> <laughs> bad butch body. Bad butch body. baby girl uh uh oh no Move to strike that from the record. <laughs> no, uh uh-uh. uh, haunted girl. <laughs> uh-huh. I just, I'm, I'm here for all of it. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. It has been wonderful. I must go and do things, experience things, so I can come back and tell you about them. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to Rambo Per Radio, RamboPerRadio.com. Some merch, um, if you please, if you must, buy something to support the show. I appreciate it. If not, that is cool also. I appreciate your listening ears for this last hour and change. And I will talk to y'all next week. But until then, this is Rambo for Radio. I'm out. Peace. Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you. You have mental problems. You have some, you need attention. You need something. You have mental problems, you have some, you need attention, you need something.